Hi, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this video, I'm going to show you some basic examples of five useful After Effects expressions. So if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe to stay tuned for all my new videos, and let's get into it. So to begin, when we're talking about expressions, we're talking about ways that we can manipulate different parameters of effects and aspects of clips. All of the basic properties of a clip, such as the position, scale, opacity, and all of the properties of any effects that we add onto a clip, like distortions and transformations, can mostly all be adjusted with keyframes and expressions, if you like to. So you might be familiar with keyframes, this little stopwatch icon, that let's say if we were to click, it adds a little diamond keyframe. And then if we move over along some time on the timeline and change the position or property, then the two keyframes will kind of interpolate from one to the other and everything in between. So this is a traditional way that you might be familiar with making animations in many video editing programs. However, expressions allow us to use some math and a little bit of coding type language to create a really flexible and useful way to adjust properties that aren't necessarily always keyframes. This gets into our first expression that we're going to talk about today, and that is time. The time expression allows us to make any property of a clip or effect a function of the time on the timeline. So to create an expression, I'm going to hold down the option key on my keyboard and click on the stopwatch icon for whatever effect that I'm adjusting. And you should see it pop up this little dialog box for us to type in expression into. So if I type in time in this case, it's going to make the value of the rotation degree a function of the time. So you see every one second here is adding one degree, which is pretty slow. But you see, if I were to play this, it's slowly rotating. Now, another useful thing that you can add to most expressions is you can multiply and divide and add and minus things. So if I just use the multiplication symbol there, little star asterisk, and I times it by, let's say, 36, that means every one second we're going to move 36 degrees, which means every 10 seconds we're going to make a full rotation. So you can see now when I play, I've got a gradual rotation and it's going to make a full one every 10 seconds. Or, you know, you can make it as fast or as slow as you want with that multiplication. And this is a way that you can use the time function to create kind of an infinite animation, something growing over time. And you can even combine it with multiplication or addition of different numbers. The next expression that we're going to be talking about, which is kind of related to this, is loop. So another way that we can make things repeat over and over is by using the loop expression. So I'm going to delete everything here. So let's say working on the same record image, I add some keyframes on the scale. So if I click on the scale, let's say I made it go from 0 scale to 100 scale and then back to zero. So you'll see I have three keyframes here and it goes from zero to 100 and back to zero, kind of grows and shrinks. But after that last keyframe happens, it doesn't repeat because there's no more keyframe information for After Effects to use. So one really useful expression that we can add onto our keyframes is the loop expression. If I click and hold option and click on that stopwatch animation, I can actually use loop and one tip I'll give you is if you hit this play drop down menu, you can see a whole bunch of expressions already written out for you if you don't memorize them or have them memorized. And under the property panel, you should find a couple different loop ones. So if I choose loop out and I can just leave it as is, if I press play now, once it hits that last keyframe, it's just going to begin looping the same keyframes over from that very last out point which in this case will create an infinite loop. Another loop is loop in. So in this case, let's say this animation, I did want it to eventually stop at some point. So let's say right here, but until that point, I wanted it to be looping. So you can see if I just change this to loop in, make sure it's a capital I or, or else it won't work. In this case, it'll loop that same animation all the way until it actually reaches those keyframes that you give it. So it's looping all the way from the first keyframe and before it, but nothing after it. So both of those can be really useful for animating start and stop points. One more really useful and cool loop expression that I'll show you before we move on is one called loop offset. So let's say we're working on the position and I'm going to move it over to the side here. Let's say I want to kind of move from left to right. 
but in an interesting way. If I add a keyframe here, let's say I make it move to the right and then back a little bit. So let's say two steps forward, one step back kind of. Now, if I wanted to continue doing that animation all the way over and over, I can use the loop adjustment, but I can make it loop so that it doesn't just loop in the same place, it continues going forward. And I can do that by adding a expression. I'll type loop out, and you'll see After Effects is helping us out here by letting, giving us the finishing suggestion. And I'll type in parentheses, offset, parentheses, and you see the autocomplete is helping us out so we don't have to be genius memorizers. Let me turn off this uh, scale effect just so you can see what's happening. It's giving us a two step forward, one step back, two step forward, one step back. And it's looping with an offset, which means it's taking the previous keyframes and offsetting them. So in this way, we have the wheel moving forward. Another useful expression that can go along with these is value. So let's say we have our keyframes or our adjustments that we've been working on, and we want to adjust the value of a certain point, but we don't want to adjust each keyframe. In this case, we can actually just use value expressions to adjust the overall value of things or add or offset things. So you can see here, if we go back to that looping circle from zero to 100%, if I don't want to adjust all of these keyframes again to different values, I can actually just add a value expression. So if I do value and I do times two, let's say, this is going to take all of the values and just multiply by two. So now everything is two times bigger. Or if I do value divided by two, this is going to make everything two times smaller. You see it's only hitting 50% now when it was reaching 100 previously. So let's say I duplicate this record. I can add value to any position. So I can value plus 500 on the X axis, move it over a little bit, or I can make this one, you know, in relation to the original, you know, two times bigger or something. So I can have the same things happening on, but two times bigger just by using that value keyframe. And you can use the value expression to adjust the values in these ways for any parameter of many effects. The next expression we're gonna talk about is random. So this is another really useful way to input a value for a parameter, but as the title suggests, in a random way. So let's actually work on a text layer for this example. And let's say I wanna make this text flicker. So normally I might have to do a lot of keyframes on the adjustments or go into the effects panel and find one of those flicker presets. But a flicker really is just kind of like a flickering of opacity, right? So how can I do that with an expression? I can just add an expression onto the opacity, and in this case, use the random expression. So by default, random will fluctuate from zero to one. So you see, you can see in red, whenever you have an expression on something, you can see what's happening in red. It's going from zero to one, so you can't really see the text at all. If I was to say random 100, we get a flicker from zero to 100. So in this way, you're seeing the text flicker. But if that was you know, too strong of a flicker for me, I could add more than one parameter. So I could say the minimum value I want it to be is you know, 75 comma and the maximum 100. In this way, it's only gonna flicker that top 25% opacity. And we have a little bit of flicker going on in the text there. Or I can do 50, 100, so a little bit stronger. But this is a really useful way. It's just generating a random number for the opacity. And random can be used to generate random variables and wild changing effects for any parameter of many different effects. Lastly, a really fun expression that kind of goes along with random, but it's a little bit different, is the wiggle expression. So let's say I was to add an expression on to the position keyframe and I use the wiggle expression. So when it comes to wiggle, you need to enter two numbers. The first one is the frequency. So let's say one time per second. And the second one is the amplitude. So in this way, it's gonna say every one second, it's gonna allow it to move about 40 pixels between the X and Y. If you wanna see what that might look like, if I increase it a little bit, let's say 100 pixels, now we're getting a bit more variation. And if I made it, a faster frequency, let's say five, it's gonna be about five times as sporadic. 
So not only can this be used for, you know, something like position, it's creating a kind of a bounce and a wiggle back and forth. You can use it for effects as well. So let's say I was to add an effect like uh, CC Griddler, which is a distort effect. Say I was to add it on this vinyl record right here. So in the CC Griddler, you have the option to adjust the rotation. So maybe it might look kind of cool if it was wiggling back and forth, but I don't really want to keyframe all that. I can add a wiggle effect onto the rotation, a wiggle of, let's say maybe one comma 360 degrees, so wiggling between one full rotation. So in this way, we're adding a wiggle effect onto the rotation parameter of an actual distortion. So it's creating its own cool little thing. And that just gives you a, a peek into all of the different flexibility that you can do with any of these expressions. So those are five useful After Effects expressions. Again, these are just one very basic introduction or one example or a few for each of them, but the flexibility and possibilities are really quite endless if you add them onto all the different parameters and all the different effects that are available to you and combine them. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like on it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel here on YouTube to stay tuned for all of my new videos. And if you want to check out more After Effects videos, I'll leave a link to some in the playlist where I might go more in depth into more of these. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.